Hickok 45 bringing to you once again the Colt single action in 45 Colt caliber. Are these beautiful guns or what? You know, I don't think I've actually uh, shown off the nickel plated Colt very much. I've uh, shot it maybe in a video or two randomly along with some other uh, Colts. I guess I did have them on in the uh, Guns of the Old West perhaps uh, video. But uh, these are a little bit different. You know, when you nickel plate something, you get a different look. And uh, just like a car, you know, you can have a vehicle that's black and then the exact same one in a red or yellow or something. And uh, it, it just looks like a totally different vehicle in some ways, doesn't it? That's kind of what you get with a Colt single action or any gun. It just looks very, very different once you uh, nickel plate it. But it is the same old gun no difference now these this is a third generation firearm this one i believe was made in the 90s 1990s and it is a five and a half inch barrel and as i've pointed out many times not much different from the ones made in 1873 or 1880 or 1890 1910 1930 they just don't change much yeah same process the old action where you have to half cock it in order to turn the cylinder unlike the some of the newer uh, variations and uh, clones of the guns. Of course, they're not truly a clone if uh, they don't operate this way with the old action where it requires a half cock. And uh, we, we do tend to call uh, them Colt clones if they operate this way. I don't think many people refer to, say, the Rugers as, as Colt clones. They're, uh, they are single action, you know, guns. They're really nice uh, in their especially the new Vaqueros are very much like this gun. They just have a different action, and, uh, but we generally don't refer to them as Colt clones. So let's go ahead and load this, this pretty baby and see if I can find some big cartridges in my belt pocket here. Yeah, look at that 45 Colt, 250 grain bullet in it. Slide those in there. Remember you skip, put one in, skip one, and you put in four and you end up with a empty chamber under the hammer which is always best and that's where we are now so I close the loading gate cock it and i happen to know it's empty under the hammer anyway okay so that is a loaded colt 45 with 250 grain bullets okay now i'm going to turn it carefully i'm not going to point it in any unsafe direction but i just want you to get a look at what it looks like the front of that cylinder we'll make sure we just kind of pointed over my shoulder here, safe direction. And, uh, you know, in some of the movies, they actually do, uh, you know, look authentic because they have some blanks that look like real bullets like that. But uh, if a Colt 45 is loaded, it should look like that in the cylinder. You can really tell from the other end, the business end, whether the gun is loaded. So anyway, they're sweet no matter what the finish, no matter what, uh, you know, coating or finish the guns have on them and uh, this one again is nickel plated just doesn't get much better than this unless you have two of them right <laughs> Two Colt single action army nickel plated five and a half inch models. These are my cowboy competition guns primarily. I use these for years, well, several years, in SAS or cowboy action shooting competition. Great pair of guns. They both shoot to the same point of impact, just a little bit high of where you hold the sights. So I never really knew which one I had in my hand in terms of point of impact. And for those of you who shoot much and you shoot these old guns with iron sights, you know how nice that is if you have two guns that shoot exactly the same. Because uh, sometimes one will shoot oh, a little bit higher than the other and some will shoot right on. And maybe one will shoot even a little bit low. And you do end up with that with the Colts or the Colt clones sometimes. The Rugers pretty much I think all shoot straight where you, where you hold. They're like a Glock. They're more of a modern uh, I don't know, firearm in that sense. So, anyway, nice guns, and let's put one of them away because they are exactly the same. Definitely, one is a clone of the other, right? 
Remember how you unload these. How I do it is I just get it in my hand like that and I get my finger up there on the ejector rod, push down. Works pretty well. They just fall out into my hand very smoothly. Don't have to fight the gun. You can double check. One thing about the big chambers is it's easy to see whether it's loaded or not, isn't it? Uh, more easily than uh, I guess you'd say with a smaller caliber, like a 22 or something. They get a little bit dirty. See how sooty they are. And I'll put those in my pocket and load them up for another day. And let's see if we can find some that have big lead slugs in them. And just take a couple more shots here. Let you look at these things. A little bit more. I've been remiss, I guess, and uh, lately I haven't done a lot with the old Colts. Eh, let's just take a few. Well, that's good. These old cans stayed right there, didn't they? I can't necessarily drive nails with, with these guns. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Ooh, nice. Nature provided a nice little target hanger there. <laughs> Oops, click. All right. I think I flinched a little bit, didn't I? Oh, yeah. I don't worry about when I'm shooting something two feet away, I guess. Although, you catch me flinching occasionally at other targets, right? Let's see what we can do on down the log there. Now, please, please, you folks from the Netherlands and the United Kingdom and some other areas of the world that seem to be bothered a little bit more than others by hurting nature. This tree is dead. He fell over a few years back, so if a bullet strikes him, uh, he's not going to bleed and cry, I promise you, okay? Let's see if we can knock that old can off. Ooh, yeehaw! I got him, all right. Got him again. Love it. <laughs> oh, man. John put one way down there at the roots. I might not be able to shoot that far with this gun. All right. Oop, I could bowl one into him with nothing else. Man, I need to shoot these more often. I'm twisting and flinching and everything else. All right, let's shoot a few more. Pretty gun. Now, I like the, these are the stock grips for this gun. They feel great to me. I have replaced uh, the grips on some of these guns, but uh, there's nothing that feels better in terms of the thickness and the way it fills the hand for me than these plain old stock grips that come on these guns. And in, the, in fact, the third generation uh, grips feel the best to me. I've been known to actually put third generation uh, rubber grips on uh, a second generation gun. I know that's sacrilegious, but uh, if I'm going to shoot it much, it just feels so much better. All right. Let's see if we can pop that guy down there. I don't think he's going to move, even if I do. Whoa, I was wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, here's a tough target right here. If I can hit him again. He's going to be pretty religious, isn't he? Very holy. Ooh. Click. All right. That one's empty. Again, so, cold single action army. These are the five and a half inch models. As I've told you before, and I get questions uh, pretty often, which is my favorite barrel length. I like all the barrel lengths uh, equally. I will have to say the little four and three quarters is nice. goes to about there. This one is the nice compromise. In the, it's the mid-range length barrel. It's great, too. And then, of course, the long one's really special. That's the way they came out for the military in 1873. Notice they get a little dirty and a little sooty, and uh, they clean up pretty nicely, though. So, uh, you know, if you haven't seen these things for a while or you're ever thinking about getting one, they're just so, so fun to shoot. And when you're holding one, you really feel as though you have a piece of history in your hand. I don't care what, what type it is. There's just something about the single action. It could be a Ruger Vaquero or a Uberti clone, an old cap and ball. It doesn't matter. When that thing hits your hand, you're back in true grit. You're back in the days of John Wayne the 1800s, uh, it just fits like a glove. So I highly recommend everybody that likes to shoot own one of these. Get at it. This and a 1911. If you don't have one, put it on your list. And that's about all I have to say about that, I think. I just love these guns. 
Glad you could come out with me today and uh, take a look at it. Life's really good.